new figures show the economic downturn has led to an increase in, two, in defaults on student loans. The U.S. Department of Education says the student loan default rate last year rose to 6.9 percent from 5.2 percent a year earlier. An estimated half a trillion dollars in federal student loan debt is now outstanding. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont has introduced a measure to establish a single-payer health care system. The American Health Security Act of 2009 would establish a single government program to guarantee health care to all Americans, including the 46 million currently uninsured. Advocates say the proposal would save some $400 billion by eliminating the bureaucratic costs of the current privately run system. The measure is similar to bills introduced by Democratic Congress members Jim McDermott of Washington and John Conyers of Michigan in the House. You can go to our interview with independent Senator Bernie Sanders from yesterday at our website, democracynow.org. In other health care news, a new study shows nearly one in five U.S. workers are uninsured. The figure marks an increase over the mid-90s, when fewer than one in seven workers were uninsured. That translates to around six million more uninsured workers over the last decade. The House has approved what's being called the biggest expansion of wilderness protection in 15 years. The bill would extend federal protection to two million acres across nine states and launch a river restoration program in western states. The Senate passed its version of the measure last week. With his expected signature, President Obama will make the bill the first major conservation effort of his presidency. Virginia Senator Jim Webb is calling for a comprehensive review of the nation's criminal justice system to reduce the growing prison population. Under the proposal, a blue ribbon panel would conduct a more than year long investigation and propose reforms on issues including law enforcement, court sentencing, reintegrating prisoners. The proposed commission would also tackle gang violence, drug policy, mental illness, and prison administration. And in Canada, a U.S. war resister has been granted a last-minute stay of deportation. The Canadian federal court says Kimberly Rivera will be allowed to remain in Canada pending a review of her deportation order. Rivera fled the U.S. in January of 2007, along with her husband and two children, to avoid returning to Iraq. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner outlined plans Thursday to rewrite the nation's financial rules as part of what The Wall Street Journal described as the most comprehensive changes to financial market regulation since the New Deal. Geithner's plan includes the creation of a single regulator to monitor any firm whose failure could threaten the financial system. Our system failed in basic fundamental ways. Compensation practices rewarded short-term profits over long-term return. Pervasive failures in consumer protection left many Americans with obligations they did not understand and could not sustain. The huge apparent returns to financial activity attracted fraud on a dramatic scale. Market discipline failed to constrain dangerous levels of risk-taking throughout the system. New financial products were created that, to meet demand from investors but the complexity outmatched the risk management capabilities of even the most sophisticated institutions in the world. To address this will require comprehensive reform, not modest repairs at the margin, but new rules of the game. And the new rules must be simpler and more effectively enforced. They must produce a more stable system, one that protects consumers and investors, rewards innovation, and is able to adapt and evolve with changes in the structure of our financial system. Treasury Secretary Geithner also called for extending federal regulation for the first time to all trading and financial derivatives and credit default swaps that are blamed for much of the economic crisis. Under his plan, the government would also be empowered to take over major non-bank financial firms, such as insurers and hedge funds, if deemed necessary. Geithner's call for new regulations on Wall Street comes just days after he introduced a controversial proposal for the government to form public-private partnerships to take troubled assets off the books of banks. To talk about these stories, the economist and writer James Goldbraith joins us from Austin, Texas. He's professor of public affairs and government at the University of Texas. His most recent book is The Predator State, How Conservatives Abandoned the Free Market and Why Liberals Should Too. His latest article, No Return to Normal, 
appears in the current issue of the Washington Monthly. Um, you are concerned about uh, Tim Geithner's plans over the last few days. Lay out your concerns, Professor Galbraith. I think that plan is based upon an excessively optimistic assessment of the prospects for those assets. And what Secretary Geithner said yesterday, uh, that these assets were uh, issued to consumers that in many cases did not understand uh, what they were getting into, uh, and that uh, uh, they were uh, magnets for fraud, uh, both of those remarks are absolutely true. But once one, I think, uh, takes that into account effectively, uh, you, you realize that the prospects for uh, capital losses on those uh, assets are really very, very high. The recovery rates are likely to be quite poor, uh, and that we've already seen that with the banks that the FDIC has taken over, specifically with NDMAC uh, in California. Um, and so uh, that suggests to me that this is a uh, this plan would have the effect of transferring the losses to the taxpayers without uh, exacting any serious consequences for the banks that essentially created the fiasco. Uh, and since the financial system has to shrink one way or another, uh, if you protect the largest banks, uh, as I think the, uh, the the Treasury plan does, uh, then the, the consequences will fall on other financial institutions, which are relatively well managed and which did not take part in the, uh, to a, the same degree in the subprime debacle. And those will tend to be smaller banks. And I think it's really, it's, it's likely to be, uh, promote an unmanageable banking structure uh, if we go that route. And secondly, uh, it's not going to uh, solve the problem which everybody would like to see solved, which is the uh, complete breakdown of the credit system. It's not going to bring uh, the, uh, the economy back to life by the vehicle of new bank spending. Well, uh, in your article, No Return to Normal, you, you, you make the point that it appears that the Obama administration is still dealing with this primarily as a, a crisis of flow in credit and not a crisis of the actual collapse of the financial system. Uh, and could you explain w in precisely in what way they are missing that uh, fundamental point? Well, we hear this expression that credit flows are blocked and that there is a need to get credit flowing again. And it really is, it's a metaphor. Uh, and I think it's a revealing metaphor if it in fact reflects the way in which uh, high officials of the government are thinking about the problem. Uh, the, the idea of a flow, of course, is something that comes from on high and goes down below. Uh, a blockage is a kind of plumbing problem. Uh, the difficulty is credit isn't like that. Credit is a bilateral contract. It's a relationship between a lender and a borrower. Uh, and the uh, problem is not that the lenders don't have money to lend. The problem is, in very large part, that there are no prospects or very few prospects for profit in the economy. And therefore, borrowers, business borrowers, aren't coming in to ask for loans for economic expansion.